Okay, today is going to be a demo on Photoshop and specifically shading in um, your storyboards using Photoshop. So my drawing that I'm going to use for these storyboards, I drew in my sketchbook, I scanned it, and then I'm going to use Photoshop to shade it in. And that can be a good workflow because you just have, um, you know, it's always easier, I feel like, to draw on paper. But then when it comes to shading using Photoshop or digital software, allows you some flexibility, you know, gives you edit undo and which can be helpful and can kind of speed things up. So to start things off, I'm just going to open up my scan. So this is my scan here. So this is going to uh, a shot from Mad Max Fury Road and that was a film where the aspect ratio is anamorphic. So if you look in the aspect ratio templates that are on the D2L, there's HDTV, which is kind of your standard modern television format. Then you have standard widescreen, which is pretty common in movies and TV. And then anamorphic is this ultra wide, which you'll kind of typically see in very cinematic, you know, um, experiences. So. Um, Mad Max Fury Road was anamorphic here, and you can usually tell what aspect ratio a film's using just by kind of just taking a moment to look at it. There's a, a relatively, there's a pretty big difference, I feel like, in the proportions between this and a standard widescreen. A standard widescreen might come up to that point, and an HDTV might come up to like that point right there. So first thing I need to do to get started on this is I need to crop it. So to crop it is this button right here. You can press C and you can grab the handles right here to choose the area that it's going to crop. Something that Photoshop does that's really helpful is it gives you these guide markers. So if you have what you know is supposed to be a straight line, you can kind of line it up because it's going to be pretty hard to get your scans like 100% perfect. And Something I like to do is I like to give just a little bit of handle, a little, um, the printing term for it is bleed um, at the end of the frame here. So you can see in my drawing, I kind of drew in the outer frame right there. But in my crop, I like to just leave a little extra room on the outside, just in case. So, oops, sorry about that. Um, so I'll just kind of pull in and make this crop. Okay, so once you've kind of set it up, you can just accept your crop by pressing this check mark and it'll make the crop for you. Keep in mind when you crop an image, it's as if you took um, scissors and you cut out that piece of paper and kind of threw away the outside here. So this kind of outside area is kind of gone after this point. So you just press that check and we're ready to start. So. The process that I'm going to use here is first you can see in my drawing and a lot of animators draw this way is we'll start with a, either a blue or a red pencil to kind of get the basic form sketched out and then move on to darker pencils and even pens after that point to kind of um, reach your final drawing. So Photoshop has a really good tool for just removing those blue lines right there. So with the background layer selected, that's the, the layer we have, and you can see it's locked right there, so there's not much I can do with it other than steps like what I'm about to do here. Is So to remove the blue, let me first just make sure I'm out of my crop tool, but I go up to, with that layer selected, I go up to image, and then adjustments, and then we're looking for black and white dot 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 right there. And so when you, click on this, it's going to turn the image black and white instantly, but there's going to be some additional controls that will help kind of remove those blue lines if you want them removed. So black and white right there. Here's the menu that shows up and you can see the image turned black and white, but we can still see those, the remnants of those blue lines. And so those blue lines are actually a little bit more of a cyan here. And essentially, 
the further you have the slider to the right, um, the more it's going to get removed. So kind of keep your eyes. So the blue lines were right there. And the more I jump that up, the more they kind of disappear. And I could do that for the blue a little bit too, just to kind of help split the difference here. And you can see here, I also need to keep my eye on the hand because that's where a lot of the, the blue lines were but you can use those sliders to knock out the blue. And so if you started out with a red pencil, it would be the same thing. You would just use this red slider up here to knock it out. So I'll press okay to accept that. And so just to kind of show the progress that was made, I'll just press edit undo. So you can see that that was the drawing before and then I'll press edit redo. And that's the drawing now with the, the blue removed. So again, just select the layer, image, adjustments, black and white, and um, the sliders here, it's just whatever color pencil you're using to sketch out your character at first, just drag it to the right. And the more you drag it to the right, the more it'll get removed. The more you drag it to the left, the, the more it'll kind of remain present in the, in the black and white representation of the drawing here. So the process that I use here is um, the, my first step is I'm going to either press uh, with this layer selected, either press Command J, that's the shortcut, or right click and go to duplicate layer and just press okay. I want the destination to remain here in this document. So we have our line drawing duplicated here. Oops. And so the reason that I'm duplicating this is the way I'm gonna work is I'm gonna make this into a sandwich essentially is I'm going to um, do my shading layers in between this top duplicate of my line drawing in the bottom one there. And that'll become clear in a moment why I'm doing it. The, um, so to kind of explain that method or expand on it is we have these different overlay modes right here with layers and they kind of behave different ways and they're super useful in Photoshop. You also have this opacity slider, but we're not actually not even going to use that right now. Um, and to best demonstrate it here, I will just paint something in, or I'm sorry, I'm going to make a new layer in the middle, like the sandwich here I'm talking about, and I'm just going to call this car shading. And notice that I turned off the visibility of that top line drawing right there. So we can see what I'm about to paint here. And if I paint something, and this is just some drawing random scribbles, it shows up. But now when I turn on the visibility of that, that line drawing, it disappears. And so if I click here and choose between these different overlay modes, what I'm going to end up using for this is the one called multiply. And what multiply does is it makes any areas in your drawing that were white, it turns them transparent. So any area that's white, it just kind of turns it into like a plane of glass essentially. And then the areas that are black or gray show up. And so it's just a way that you can kind of superimpose the drawing on top of your, your shading here. And so hopefully if that doesn't make sense, this, it'll hopefully become clear as I continue to operate on this. So um, before we proceed here, this is really important is on the D2L, um, there are under resources and materials, I have Photoshop brushes, oops, resources and materials. We have Photoshop brushes right here on the D2L. And so these are a selection of Photoshop brushes that I've put together for the class that are helpful for painting and storyboarding concept art kind of stuff. And the reason to do that is you'll kind of find with Photoshop, it's a super powerful program, but the the brushes, the standard brushes that come, that ship out with Photoshop are just not that good. And so there's a lot of online resources for you to download your own. Um, and there's a ton of options out there. A lot of people custom make their own brushes, things like that. And I have a few of my brushes that I've, either made or collected over the years and put them on the D2L. So if you're going to use Photoshop in this class and you have your own computer where you can load these brushes onto, 
um, I would recommend using these. So you can just right click there and then press download on the D2L and then it'll take a second to download. And we'll go to show and finder here. And so I have it under my downloads right here. And what I would rec recommend you do to install these brushes here is, oops, open up your finder or open up another window for your finder. And under applications and then find Photoshop and so I'm on Photoshop 2021 right now. Then under here, you'll find a folder called presets. And then I'm looking for brushes. And so here, you can just kind of drag these brushes into, into that folder. Essentially, you just want the, these brushes, which are it's an ABR file, to be in a place on your computer where they won't get deleted out. So kind of a safe location. And this is the location I would recommend here. It's, um, uh, it works out pretty well if you put it there. So again, um, take that ABR file, go under applications, Photoshop, presets, and then brushes right there, and then load it into there. And so I'll just go ahead and do that. I have another download of it here. Oops. Okay. And so how do you load it into Photoshop? There's another step we need to do, and it's very simple, is so press B or kind of load up your brush tool in Photoshop. Right click on your canvas so you get the, the breakout menu. And in the top right of the breakout menu, there's this little gear right here. And so you just click on the gear and we're looking for import brushes right there. So if you just press import brushes and then you go find the file and load it in, that's all there is. And the brushes will load up and they'll show up as a new folder in this menu right here. And again, you get to this menu by either right clicking and finding this where, um, as long as the brush tool is selected. It's also up here. If you click up here, you can find that menu. And then finally, there's a window that is brushes right there, which I have loaded into my interface. This is kind of, I guess, a custom interface that I have going right now but you can find it under window brushes right there. So there's a ton of places you can find them. So what brushes are loaded into that kind of preset preset pack that I made there? Let me just demonstrate those real quick here and kind of give like a brief overview of brushes for anyone who's um, needs an introduction here. So the brushes that are on that D2L there uh, these are the brushes that you would get right here. So let me just demonstrate them real quick and then also give some an overview of how to use the brush tool. So the first one was like a light pencil setting right here. And you can kind of build up shapes with it pretty well, or crosshatch, I should say. And so when you look up here, you can see that whichever tool that you use, so I'm using the brush tool, maps automatically to the, the top here. So for instance, if I do the crop tool, you see the top changes. If I do um, the stamp tool, it changes. And so for the brush tool, we have these controls right here. And so let's just kind of go through these real quick because even if you're familiar with Photoshop, um, there might be something you might learn on this one. So first we have opacity. And so that's the opacity of the brush. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opacity down and the shortcut for it is the, you can either click here, do the slider, or you can type in, I'm going to type in one. Oops. With the brush tool selected, I'm going to type in one and it goes to 10%. And so one through nine is 10%, 50% for five, 
If I press seven, it's seventy percent. If I press nine, it's ninety percent. And again, in there, if I press zero, it'll go up to hundred percent. So that's a really helpful shortcut for quickly changing the opacity of your brush. So I will just do this, and you can see that the opacity of my brush is at forty percent. If I hit zero, it'll go to a hundred percent right there. And um, changing the opacity, you can kind of do it one of two ways here. So let me just switch to a standard brush just so I can show this as clearly as possible. I'm going to change the brush size. So here I have just the most standard Photoshop brush there is, the soft round, and the opacity is at 100% right there. And so here I'm going to change the opacity to 20%. And you can see it comes in at 20% the darkness right there. And since I changed the opacity here though, if I paint again, you see how it kind of overlays on top of itself. And so it gets a little bit darker each time it overlaps on there. Right? And so that's what happens when you do the brush opacity there. So as a change of pace, I'm going to move that up to 100. I'm going to make a new layer. And now I'm going to change the layers opacity down to tw about 20% here. And this is going to behave a little bit differently. So since the brush, the brush's opacity is at 100%, but the layers opacity is at 20%. So this is going to start out doing that exact same thing. But one thing that can be cool about changing the opacity here is if I keep painting on top of it, it doesn't kind of have that overlay effect. And so one way is not better than the other. It's just, it kind of depends on your style and kind of what you're going for. And it's just kind of nice to know that changing the, the layers opacity kind of keeps things uniform. And then if you change the brushes opacity, you get a little bit more of like a, you know, perhaps like an organic thing happening there. So let me just delete these layers real quick. Just drag them to the trash there, create a new layer. And moving across this menu a little bit more is next we have, we're going to go over flow and then smoothing up here. And so flow, the way I like to think about flow is if the flow is at 100%, just imagine that you kind of dipped your, your paintbrush in paint and it's the brush is totally covered. And if the flow is at 10% or 4%, you know, just a low flow right here. It's more of like a dry brush where you have less less ink or less paint on, on your, your brush right there. So let me just pull up a decent brush here to kind of demonstrate that. So I have this brush right here. So right now the flow is at 100%. And if I change the flow, oh no, I'm sorry. Now the flow is at 100%. And if I press, if I bring that down to 10%, it kind of has that, uh, that look to it as, as opposed to the bottom one. And so it's kind of, it's a little bit similar to the opacity, but I, I, I think the analogy I made with the, the amount of paint on the brush is, is pretty accurate to the, the actual feel of it here. And so you can change the flow by changing the slider right here, or you can press shift and then the number is one through 10. So if I press shift and four, the flow will be at 40% right there. And when I'm using Photoshop, I, my personal style, I use this flow a lot to kind of change, change my brushes. And also keep in mind that I'm drawing this with a tablet right now. And so right here, I'm doing like a really light stroke. I'm kind of pressing a little bit harder and now I'm pressing as hard as I can right there. Um, all in one stroke right there. So when you have the flow down like that, it kind of enables you to kind of paint in your own darkness uh, as, as, as well as possible right there. So that's one reason that I use the flow pretty heavily with my own personal drawing style here. So next up we have smoothing and I'll go back to a normal brush again. So just a regular hard round brush. And so 
if you have smoothing down at zero percent and this is something where it'll be best for you just to kind of draw it to feel it out for yourself but essentially what you draw is what you get here meaning that um there's no corrections and if you draw like a very um jittery line here there's no smoothing or anything that happens there and so as i pull smoothing up it kind of rounds things out for me a little bit and you can see the brush stroke flows behind my cursor a little bit but it just um the smoothing just helps kind of um smooth out your lines so if you're doing like a a cartoon character or something like that smoothing can be a really helpful tool so those are kind of those controls up there and if you notice, I've been right clicking to change the size of my brush right here. So I can have a brush that size. Let's just bring that back down. And then if I bring that up there, the brush gets much larger. Um, the shortcut for that is, and this is a really helpful shortcut here, is the square brackets on your keyboard. You can either tap them or hold them down. And so the left bracket makes it smaller. And if I hold down, the right bracket you can see it kind of jump up in size right there and so it's kind of a quick way to change your brush size especially if you need to just make a minor adjustment as you're as you're painting that can be helpful and again you can also right click and pick that slider there to change the brush size right there so that's kind of an overview of the brush tool and then the eraser tool is behaves exactly the same way in terms of you right click you kind of choose which setting you want for it and you can erase out your brush stroke right there so something i said i was going to do in the tutorial and then i got a little sidetracked by just kind of introducing the brush tool is the um, presets that are, are on the D2 L. So this folder that I have right here called draw brushes is, are the presets. And so there's the light pencil right here, which is, which can be really helpful, at least in my experience, especially if you're kind of sketching something out for the first time, you can right click and choose like a heavier pencil right there. So have that one. Then needed eraser is what I currently have as my eraser right now. So I'll show that in a moment. Pencil fill is what I showed a moment ago. And just kind of moving through these. We have a gouache brush, which I use a lot when I'm doing something, um, sorry, doing storyboards in Photoshop. Remember that shift and then like the number three changes the flow. And that kind of changes the amount of paint that's on the brush right there. So these gouache brushes are ones that I tend to use a good amount. And each one is pretty similar. They just, if you zoom in on them, like the brushes are just ever so slightly different right there. Um, and so there's three of them. They're all very, very similar, or actually four, except this one is pretty different. And it's just nice to have that variety there. So things don't look too digital. There's a pen ink one right here, which is a very standard brush, but it has like um, the harder you press it, the thicker the line is, which can be really helpful. So I'm pressing really lightly right here and then I'm going to press hard and then really lightly. And so it's kind of like a, a pretty standard pen, but it responds to how heavily you're pressing down on your tablet. Um, and then it's the Conti square, which um, is kind of emulates a Conti crayon. And then here there's markers, which people use for their storyboards a lot. So that that's included here. So that's marker one big. I have another marker, which is really similar, just a slightly different size. And a marker here that behaves a little bit differently. And then finally we have some other kind of paint brushes here. And then finally, the last one, we have an ink brush right there, which is kind of like a little bit of like a sloppy ink tool right there. And so, um, yeah, these are just some brushes that um, 
I think could be an improvement over the standard brushes. And so again, that's under the D2L. Um, under resources and materials, it's the, the first one at the top right there. So painting in your storyboard, or shading in your storyboard, I should say, kind of moving back to that. We have, remember we have the original layer. I did the image adjustments black and white and took out the blue lines and I duplicated it and push, put it up at the top. And here, I'm gonna put it under multiply and then I'm gonna lock it. So you lock a layer by pressing this little lock button right here. And what it does is it makes it so, you see I have my brush tool and I'm hovering my cursor over it with, with that layer selected and it's giving me the little Ghostbusters no-go sign here. And so when you click on it, it says that the layer is locked and you can't paint on it. And so that's good because I want to protect that layer. I don't want to draw on it anymore and I want to add shading that kind of shows up behind it. So I'm going to sandwich it here and I'm going to start by shading in the back of the car. So I'm just going to call this car and I will choose uh, a light gray here. So anyone who's unfamiliar with Photoshop, we have our primary color here, secondary color here. And the reason that there's two colors right here is just so you can kind of switch back and forth between them real quick if you press this little arrow right there. So it's just kind of a way to quickly have two, lo two colors loaded. If you double click on it, if you hover to the left of this box right here, we have, we start with white in this corner and then it goes right here is whatever color you currently have it on. And it goes darker gray and then finally to black in that corner. To the right here we have our hue slider. And so this changes it through the rainbow here and it starts at red and then returns back at red. And the further you have your, this dot here to the right, it'll move to a fully saturated blue. And if you move it into this corner, it's a dark blue. And then finally in here, you'll get kind of like a desaturated blue. And so you can kind of pick whatever color using this. In um, storyboards, we're doing black and white for these. So you can just drag this down to a dark gray and get started here. So I'm gonna fill in this cab and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna start with a one of my gouache brushes here. Let's try that one. That one should be okay. So, and notice that since I have this as a multiply layer and then the shading layers right there below, that when I paint, my drawing still kind of shows up on top of it right there, which is, you know, the whole point of that step right there. So, I'm just gonna increase my brush size. I'm keeping my flow at 100% here just for this one. And I'm gonna fill in this layer. And I'm going to be a little sloppy here. Doo -doo -doo. And I'm actually just, I'm going to go over the lines a little bit. And then I'm going to use the eraser tool to kind of clean it up after the fact here. So th again, this is the fill gouache brush that I'm using right now. And when I fill in story or shade storyboards using the bracket tool there, when I, when I shade in storyboards, I like to kind of have things shaded on as they go to different planes here. So the cab of the car, I'm gonna have be one gray I'm gonna have the character kind of be a different shade and then have the whatever's in the foreground and the background be a different shade from that. And that's gonna be kind of the way I operate here. So here, I need to just clean up my work. And so I'm gonna use my eraser. Right now I'm using the kneaded eraser, which is part of that, that brush pack that is included on the D2L there. And sometimes when you're using a brush, especially on diagonals like this, you're going to want to change the angle of your your perspective because I'm right-handed and sometimes these diagonals can be like a little bit tricky in here if you want to clean them up. So the shortcut for that is if you 
if you recall, we have the hand tool here, which is this button here under the tool menu. If you press H or the space bar, it'll kind of help you kind of zoom into different areas. And if you hold it down and then go down to rotate view, and the shortcut for it is R, it allows you to rotate your drawing right here. And it's not actually rotating the document. You can see it's still straight up and down. It's just rotating our preview of it. And so while you're drawing, this can be really helpful while you're filling things in just to press the R button uh, and rotate your canvas here. If you hold shift while you do it, it'll rotate that looks like by 15 degree increments right there. And so if you if you're kind of you have it rotated around like this angle and you want to bring it back, you can just hold shift and then bring it back to its original position right there. And so that's a really, really helpful tool right there. And again, the shortcut for it is R is right there under the toolkit. And so that can just help you change your perspective as you are um, erasing or drawing here. And when you familiarize, familiarize yourself with the shortcuts, just being able to not go through menu diving and stuff like that and just know that to navigate around the document, the buttons you're gonna to wanna to press are R for rotate, H to pan it, um, and then Z to zoom in and out. And once you kind of have those memorized, and then you have B for brush tool, it makes it so you can work a lot quicker and also just have Photoshop be a lot more fun because you're not diving through menus. It just becomes more and more as if you were painting something by hand and getting all the advantages of working digitally and none of the headaches of working traditionally. So here I'm just gonna hold down R, rotate this back again, hold shift to snap it back. So I have the cab of the car filled in right here and I use the fill gouache there. Notice that I still have this opacity slider here. So if I decide I wanna change the way that that's shaded, I have that option right there to kind of fine tune it. And so I'm gonna make a new layer for each kind of plane that I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna name this character. Notice that I always name my, my layers here. And so here I'm gonna shade in my character. So I'm gonna press B for brush tool. I'm gonna to use a slightly different brush. I might just use my medium gouache for this. And I'm gonna go for a much darker gray and change my flow by holding shift and three down to 30%. And so this character in the film, for anyone who's seen it, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about, has a kind of a skull-like appearance a little bit. And they have heavy bags under their eyes. And so for this, I'm gonna kind of fill that in pretty dark. And you might wanna use the marker tool or something like that. It just depends on your style. I like the, the gouache brush here because I like to kind of lean into more of a hand-drawn organic look here. And I kind of like the gouache for kind of achieving that look. So for the, for the lips, I want that to be a little lighter. So I'm changing the opacity of my brush to 20%, maybe 50%. So that's a way you can kind of quickly get something a little lighter in there using the bracket tool to increase and decrease the size of my brush. I can move this back up to zero. So the opacity is back at 100% as I fill in some of these other areas here. And the main thing here is to kind of keep it relatively loose with your brush strokes and things like that. You know, we don't wanna get too detailed here, but you also, it is of strong importance that when this is done, that it reads clearly, right? So kind of keep, find that balance of keeping things loose, but um, also not getting too loose to where it gets confusing to look at. Like I want, I want people to be able to look at this illustration and kind of know what I'm getting at right away is kind of the hope, that's, that's the goal. So I'm gonna make a new layer for the steering wheel, 
foreground. I'm going to keep that same brush and I'm going to make it even a little bit darker here. And I need to change my canvas. You can also use the navigator here, the navigator window at the top to kind of change the position. That, that could be really helpful. And a lot of the time when I'm working, it might not be clear right at first, but I'll be pressing like the brackets tools, be pressing, you know, the H button to kind of pan or the R button. And so ideally when you're painting, you're not kind of, you shouldn't, especially kind of the more you kind of get used to Photoshop, shouldn't be having to dive through menus too much. You should be able to just kind of work quickly and let the keyboard um, let you navigate through those menus automatically there. So, okay, for the foreground, I need to paint this in a little bit more. And something I like to do here, just for future reference, is um, especially for anyone who's familiar, and I'll go over this in future lessons, is I actually like to use swatches. And swatches is where you kind of set up your own custom color palette. And so I have a color palette here called Storyboard where I have like a really simple grayscale right there and it helps me just so I just kind of speaking of shortcuts not have to go through here and kind of pick colors and I can just kind of go through and pick like a light gray right here and I will definitely show you all more on how to set that up in future lessons here. So I'm just going to continue working on the the foreground layer to fill this in. It's nice to make new layers but you also don't need to get to a, you know, you don't want it to have too many layers, your document and get overwhelmed. Okay, and so this thing's starting to kind of come together a little bit. And let me just add a little light shading here. And I'm gonna do one more for the, the sky behind the window right there, just like a really light gray, just to make it so it's not a, a total white area right there. So this is gonna go behind the car even. I'm gonna make a new layer and call the sky, oops. So you just double click where it says layer one and then just you can type in sky. And I'm gonna go back to fill gouache right there. Use the bracket tool to get larger brush strokes. And we're on a light gray. And I'll paint this in. And one thing that's nice too, is I don't have to get it 100% perfect in terms of the, the tone of it. Notice that this is going quicker too because I'm painting behind some of the other layers and I'll clean this up with the eraser tool in a second. But I don't need to get the tone totally perfect because I can use the opacity slider and kind of change things up here a little bit as well, right? So you can kind of customize it there. And so I'm going to clean this up some. Again, try not to get too precious with it, you know, but it is nice just to kind of get rid of that bleed there. And I do find it's generally faster way to work is, at least for me personally, is to be a little, a little rough with the, um, or inexact with the initial shading of something and then just use the eraser tool to kind of fill in any areas that need a little cleanup. And I find, I find personally that that goes a little quicker for me than if I were to kind of obsessively try to get everything totally perfect from the get-go. So here, this thing is looking almost done. So I'll just press Shift and R to rotate my canvas back to a flat view here. And the last thing I wanna do is I have my line work from my initial drawing, but I just want my storyboard to read ultra clear here, right from the beginning. And so let me just clean this up real quick. 
I also use the eraser tool to kind of um, clean some stuff up. Sorry. Um, so I, I want to create some clean line art to just to make sure that this thing is reads as clearly as possible, as quickly as possible for the audience. And so I am going to make a new layer at the very top. So I'm going to the I have all these layers here. Remember foreground was that layer that had my, I'm sorry, OG line drawing is the layer that had my initial drawing. So what I've kind of shaded looks like that, but since I have my original line drawing multiplied and on the top, it looks like that right now. And even on top of that, I'm gonna press plus and I'm gonna do um, pen. And so I'm just gonna add some digital line art on top of this just to kind of further define things. So I'll right click here and go to my pen ink brush. Remember, this is the brush that um, if you pr press hard, it will um, make a thick line. And if you press lightly, it'll make a thin line. And I'm just noticing here, sorry, the, the car, that's that's bothering me that this is, the shading kind of came in on the face a little sloppily there, but easy to fix. Okay, so, sorry, back to the pen layer and I press B for the brush tool, and I have it all the way on black. And so here, I'm just gonna use the brush tool to fill in these lines. I can also turn that smoothing up if I want that line to be a little bit smoother. If I want Photoshop to help me create kind of a clean line. And this is something that feels subtle, but it can go a really long way for having an audience just be able to look at your board and understand it instantly here. And this will also be helpful to kind of know about for when you kind of start getting into character design, things like that, where you want this drawing to be more finished than a storyboard to kind of get familiar with this kind of process. So again, I'm just using the brush tool. This is a brush that's in the, the preset pack that's on the D2L. And, oops. It's hard to do this one quickly. You know, you can't really rush this step too much. But um, I outlined the head just then, and I'm also going to outline some of the main features of the face. Remember that the brackets tool is there for if you want to change the size of your brush without diving into any menus. So here I like to just kind of define the upper eyelashes here and perhaps the eyebrow. We're kind of just going for the most important features here to help pull this character out off the page. Do one line, two line there for this bottom eyebrow. And all right, that's the eye is going to move on to the nose. I'm kind of just working with what's there a little bit. And since I feel pretty good about my line art on the original drawing, this makes this step a lot easier because I'm just essentially tracing. And I'm just kind of finding key areas here that could use just a little more definition just to help create some variation in line. Okay, so we have the main character pinned in. So you can see as I turn the visibility off, that's where we started, that's where we go. And it just, you see how that makes the drawing just read a lot more quickly right there, just that little difference. And so I'm just gonna go through and do this for the rest of the character here. I find personally that when I'm doing storyboards, I don't, it depends on the board and things like that, but I'll typically just do this for the character. And, um, cause the character is kind of the most important thing here. 
And I, I typically won't do this too much with the environment. I might do it with a character and then any kind of important accessory that might be real, you know, pertinent to the scene here. So for instance, he's driving the steering wheel. So I might just quickly kind of go through and add some lines on the steering wheel, just as a small touch here. Okay. And so now that's off, that's on right there. So just using the pen tool to create outlines. I think that's really important stuff right there. And then finally we have this arrow right here and we could, this arrow is indicating for anyone who's wondering, the character in the scene is rotating their head. So at the beginning of the shot, this character's head is turned looking through his um, rear window there. And then in the second part of the shot, he's facing the camera here. And so instead of drawing that out into two panels, it's not definitely not necessary for the shot because the the framing of the shot remains the same through it. You know, the the shot for the most part is the same throughout. He's just facing away and then he faces forward here. So that's what this arrow is indicating. Notice that I drew the arrow in three dimensions, which is really helpful. You'll find that um, drawing arrows in three dimensions is really important in storyboards because two dimensional arrows just leave um, room for confusion to happen um, because sometimes you'll draw an arrow and without the perspective there it's really hard for the for your viewer or viewers to to know which way it's supposed to be turning without adding just those three-dimensional lines right there and so um, that's kind of how you fill in a storyboard right there and um, one thing I'd like to add is um, the a good idea sometimes is if you want your arrow just to kind of read immediately is we could also fill in the arrow right there so I could make a new layer and put it underneath the original line drawing call this arrow and I'll change my color to like a really desaturated red or something and It just kind of depends. Uh, this is this is totally stylistic. Um, I heard this mentioned. I thought it was a good idea. Um, and you could just kind of fill in an arrow, just so that it's clear to the audience right from the beginning. Like that arrow, especially if the arrow is indicating like a really important thing. The arrow is not really part of the scene right there. And you can change the opacity of it, make it really subtle if you want, you know, because the rest of this image is black and white. It doesn't take much just to kind of help differentiate it. So I took the opacity and changed it down to 37 there, for instance. And that's the scene right there. So last thing is uh, saving this is when you're saving a Photoshop file like this, it's really um, important to kind of know the differences between some of these file types and so if you go to file save as uh, there's one menu and then save a copy that's another menu and we're going to do both uh one, one of each here so I'll press file save as and i'll just go um and so when you go file save as, it automatically goes to a Photoshop file, which you can see up here is a PSD, a .psd. And generally speaking, that's the best file type, especially if you want to have a working file, meaning a file that you can open up, you know, a day later or a month later and be able to have all the layers down here um, still there. And so you can continue to edit and fine tune it. It's also uncompressed file type. So it's a very large file type. So you're not going to lose any resolution or anything like that. And so it's just kind of the highest quality option, really. And so you just press file save, okay, and it's in there. And so two days from now, if I want to open this thing back up, I'll be able to open it and all these layers will be there for me. Um, where the Photoshop or the PSD file falls short a little bit is if you're trying to share your image with somebody else, um, like over email or something like that. It's just a bigger file type. Plus, um, they'll have to open it in Photoshop and layers will be there and it just kind of gets, it can get pretty ugly. And so if you're sharing your image with somebody, you're going to want to flatten it here. 
Additionally, if you're taking this image and it's done and you want it, and you're loading it into your storyboard template, so kind of turning it into a PDF, um, a JPEG is the better option for that as well, because um, it, it'll just be easier to work with here. So to save a flattened file, you just go to file, save a copy rather than file save as. And I'm going to save a copy in the same place right here. And it adds, you see here, I named that first one video demo one. And then this one's video demo one copy right there. And I'll go in the same folder and then save it as a JPEG. And when you save JPEGs, you'll get this window and then there's the slider. And always just kind of take that slider and pull it all the way up to the top to maximum right there. That's just the image quality. And if you need to email it and the file's too big, you can drag the slider down and it'll just compress it and make, make it like a lower um, resolution file type there. So I'll just press okay. And just to kind of show that, I'll close this out. And then I'm going to open both of those up. So we have both those files here. So this is video demo one. So this is the PSD file. You can see all my layers are still there. And it's as if I had just picked up right where I left off. And then this JPEG right here, the copy, where we did file save a copy. You can see that layer menu, it all gets compressed down into one layer right there. Um, and it's uh, the JPEG is yeah, a really nice file type, just really um, easy to work with and stuff like that if you're, you're sharing it right there. So next up, I will show how to kind of put all this into the storyboard template and then combine it into a PDF.